Hey everybody, this is Brian Goulet of Goulet Pen Company and InkNouveau.com. Today I want to give you my first impression of the Lamy 2000 fountain pen. It's kind of an iconic fountain pen, very classic, it's been around since 1966. I've never used one before, so I want to give you my first impression when I ink it up for the very first time. Let's give it a go. Here we are checking out the Lamy 2000 fountain pen. This comes in a box that all the higher end Lamy's, the CP1, the Studio, um, come in, the accent. Um, it's this black kind of, uh, I want to say it feels kind of like a craft paper covered cardboard type thing. It sounds cheaper than it feels. It's, 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 it's okay. It's, it's a nice cool box. Um, this blue thing is just kind of like a protective um, plastic over the Lamy logo here. Sometimes it's on there, sometimes it's not. It's just to protect that Lamy logo there. So that's kind of neat. Um, the way this pen box opens up is kind of cool. It unfolds just like that to reveal the pen. Um, it's got a little sales information here that has, you know, pictures of how to replace refills and ballpoint pens. And it's got pictures of several of the different uh, types of Lamy pens there. But uh, we're not going to worry about that. And then it's got a little warranty policy in here explaining you know, where to return it if you have problems with it and so on and so forth. So anyway, here's the pen. Comes in this little baggie to protect it, but this is the pen itself. So just seeing the pen in the box, it's kind of cool how it folds up like that, you know. I don't know if the boxes would be worth keeping for you, but uh, it's not the worst of pen boxes I've seen out there. But anyway, we don't really care that much about the box. Here is the pen. Now this pen is really kind of a neat design. It's, uh, let me zoom in a little bit for you. It's um, a very kind of industrial look. But it's also it's also very sleek at the same time. I like it. To me, it just screams out, you know, Germany. This is German engineering here. Um, the material is this black fiberglass with stainless steel. It's a material they called macrolon, um, and uh, it's really kind of an interesting material. It has kind of a brushed uh, feel to it. So it's got a little bit of texture. It's not entirely smooth. It's not obtrusive though. I don't think anybody would find it offensive. And then it's got brushed stainless here on the clip. Very sharp looking. The clip is um, a spring clip. So the clip itself doesn't bend. It's kind of spring loaded there. So it kind of makes it easy to get it in and out of your pocket there. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So to get this thing apart, you pull it like that. It has like these little metal, these tiny little metal parts that protrude just a little bit there. Um, that's what grabs onto the inner part of the cap. So when you put the cap on, you can hear that kind of snaps into place and secures it. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. And this, this uh, front section here is stainless steel. And you'll probably notice that this doesn't look like your typical nib. This is what's called a hooded nib. And a hooded nib is um, basically a conventional fountain pen nib that's just covered up. Reason being, it allows you to grab closer to the end of the pen without getting ink on your hands, um, like you would with a conventional uh, long nib. So that might be a, a, a nice selling point to you. It may not, you may not care, I don't know. Um, it has an ink window in here, so that's kind of cool. Um, the way that this pen fills, it's what's called a piston fill pen. And the way that the piston fill works is you can't even see it, but there's a separate section here in the back that actually unscrews just like so. It's so it's so tightly machined that you can't even see it until you start unscrewing it. So you just grab firmly onto the front of the pen, start unscrewing it, and what's happening is there's a piston inside here that's moving down, and you'll be able to see it in the ink window here in just a second. There it is. So there's your piston that's moving up and down. And that is going to fill... Um, draw ink up into the pen, like so, okay? And then when you draw it all the way up, it goes back to um, looking like normal. It's kind of a neat, got a little stainless steel thing going on in there in the top, nice aesthetic appeal. And the pen posts like so, it's got a nice firm post. It has like these metal springs inside the cap here. I don't know how well you can see that, but that kind of helps to let it grab onto the back of the pen. Um, and uh, it gives you a nice Nice overall, aesthetically pleasing pen, very comfortable in the hand. So uh, let me go ahead and ink this thing up. I thought it would be appropriate to use a Lamy ink. It's Lamy turquoise. This is my favorite of all the Lamy inks. For those of you not familiar with the Lamy bottles, um, the bottom comes off and it has this 
um, what they call blotting paper. It's not the same as the blotting paper you use on actual paper. It's really just used to clean off your nib, so I'll use that in a second. The bottle's kind of neat. It looks like a spaceship or something like that, but the bottom of it has this little dip part in there, so it allows you to get your pen all the way down in there even when the ink level gets really low, and it kind of snaps into the bottom. Really cool, um, and pretty affordable ink too, 50 mils. So, okay, I'll go ahead and fill this thing up and write with it for the very first time. So, this is an extra fine, by the way. The Lamy pens tend to run a little bit broad, so an extra fine might be, if you're used to using any of the Japanese pens, it'll probably be closer to what you're used to with a regular fine. So, what I wanna do first is take and move the plunger all the way down. So I wanna unscrew this thing completely. Okay, so now the plunger is all the way down, and I want to completely submerse the nib down into the ink all the way up past where this little hole is here. That's going to ensure that I can get a proper fill. So there we go, I've stuck it down in there. And I'm just unscrewing. I'm actually gonna stick it all the way down in there. Okay, so I'm getting a good fill. Voila. And I can see that I've got it filled because I can see the ink actually has kind of filled up that ink window there. And then I can use this little blotting paper here. It's perforated at about an inch and a half, somewhere like that. And I can use that to kind of wipe the excess ink off of the pen. That's kind of a neat feature. Lamy's is the only ink that comes with built-in blotting paper on their bottles. So let me zoom back out so you can see what the heck is going on. There you go. Okay, now I have an inked up Lamy 2000. I'm gonna go ahead and post it because I kind of like the feel of it posted. It's got a nice, it's got a nice balance. It's definitely more nib heavy because of the stainless steel on the front. If you don't have it posted, if you do post it, then it's got a really, really good balance. It feels really nice. It doesn't feel front heavy or back heavy. Um, it's very well balanced. So okay, let's go down here and see what we've got going on. Okay. Hopefully I actually drew up the ink into the pen here. Get a little tap, get it going. There we go, it's being a little stubborn, but okay, I got it working. Lamy 2000. Extra fine. It's a nice smooth nib here, I like this. It doesn't have a lot of flex to it. Now the pen, um, the nib itself is, um, I wanna say it's 14 karat gold and it's um, platinum coated. So that's why it's kinda got that silvery look to it. It's nice, it's got a good feel to it. Um, the pen overall has a ni very nice balance. The only thing that may be a little bit bothersome, um, it doesn't bother me, I'm holding my pen a little bit forward, but if you hold your pen really far back is these little metal parts here. You can see them sticking out just a little bit there. They may or may not bother you. Um, they're not really sharp or anything. They don't protrude a lot. Like I said before, that's part of what helps the cap to stay on. It may or may not be something that bothers you. So that's something to take into consideration. This is one of those pens that some people are a little gun shy about getting, especially online, because it's, it's kind of a different pen than most, especially with the hooded nib and things like that. Now, um, you know, one of the complaints I've heard about these pens is that the nib can be a little bit scratchy or have problems filling or something like that. I think the filling is just getting used to the hooded nib. The scratchiness, you can actually take and just kind of bend and adjust the tines just a little bit. If it's anything beyond that, you can either ask your retailer where you got it from or it's got the warranty information from Lamy. You can uh, have them help you out and take care of it. The flow is good. Um, it's definitely an extra fine. I want to say it feels like a little more of a true extra fine than um, than the Lamy, like the Safari nibs, the ones that are replaceable. But then I don't have a vast experience with extra fine nibs, so I may need to do some further investigation there. Um, but I do like the flow. It's definitely keeping up with me and writes well. Um, 
I don't, it, there's not a lot of line variation. It's, it's just a, you know, regular rounded nib. So it's not like an italic or anything like that that uh, should throw you off. Um, but yeah, overall I, I like it. I must say um, I'm very pleased with how this pen um, writes overall. Very good design. Um, kind of a classic pen. It's been around since 66 and it's got kind of a cult following. So I hope you uh, have been able to learn at least a little bit something about the pen today. So that's my review of the Lamy 2000 fountain pen. One thing I did want to add after some further testing, um, you may have noticed in the video I had a little trouble starting the pen. Well, the reason is because there's that tiny hole right there. That's where the ink actually fills into the pen and it kind of bypasses part of the nib when you fill it for the first time. So it takes a little bit of work to get that ink to feed down into the nib before it starts writing. But once you get it done, a few taps on the paper like I did in the video, then you're able to get the ink flowing and it flows nice and smooth with no problem. So I thought that was just worth kind of pointing out. So anyway, I hope this review was helpful for you. If you have any questions, you can always email me at brian at Thanks a lot and write on.